So in this particular video, I'll be discussing which are the sectors I am favoring in terms of swing trading and positional trading. And these sectors are FMCG consumption, IT, pharma, and in the high beta space, something like realty. So this is my preference for the next two, three months at least. And this is what uh, I'll keep updating. This is actually the second part. In the first part, I have covered something like FMCG consumption with respect to short term trading. So I'll just link up the video here for those of you who have missed it. It was released on Wednesday. And in today's video, let us go through just one of these sectors just to show you how I shortlist stocks, how I look at the structures, uh, more about price action, those sort of things I'll explain by taking something like FMCG as an example. And the concepts that I'll discuss here will be applicable on all IT, pharma and realty stocks. So let us first begin with the chart of FMCG sector. This is on a daily time frame chart. So along with consumption, IT and something like realty, pharma, FMCG is one sector that I've identified will do well over the next two to three months. And that is where I'll try and find out some trading opportunities. I have already taken some positions uh, which I've explained in part one of this video. So if you look at FMCG, this is as of today's data, that is uh, 9th of uh, April. We have seen a fresh high here. Price is at 35.322. As of this recording, price has fallen about 100 points from here. So candle will be somewhere here, but that is fine. In terms of overall structure, we have made a fresh new swing high. So this is just a swing high that has formed in the market. And now whether we see further momentum right away or some pullback and then a new high, that is something only time will tell. But in terms of structure, within a structure of higher high and higher low, we are now seeing a new swing high in the market that is with respect to FMCG index. So this is one thing that I always like to see that is sector movement happening on the upside and that is when I go down and then start selecting few stocks. So in terms of the first step, it is always to check for sector trend and FMCG sector obviously is in an uptrend and we've also made a fresh swing high here. And all this I am only checking on a daily time frame chart. So before we move forward, please note that there are over 200 free videos available on this channel for you to learn trading and investing. Just go to the link here. I'll make sure the link is easily visible. Also, when you click on the playlist, each and every video has been organized in a playlist so that you can learn in a proper sequence, take notes and get better at trading and investing. And make sure you have clicked the subscribe button and the bell icon. This is the only way you will get notified when a new video is released on this channel. And if you think our videos deliver value to you, please consider hitting the like button because it really helps out our channel. The next thing that you'll always have to take note of is the broader market trend. So I'll just use an abbreviation here. This is broader market trend. See, whenever you're trying to swing trade or trade positionally, this is Nifty 500 on daily time frame chart. Make sure the trending structure is clearly on the upside. The main reason why I'm emphasizing upon this is because let's say I'm choosing something like FMCG, Pharma, IT, or even Realty to trade over the next three, four months. But if the broader market starts doing something like this, that is Nifty 500 starts moving lower with momentum, irrespective of which sector you choose here, everything is going to hit stop loss. That is why always focus on the broader market trend. If the broader market trend is on the upside, then you should be trading only in the direction of trend. Don't take counter trend trades. It's a it's become a fashion to learn how to uh, short sell in the market. Please stay away from all this. Uh, this is not the right way to grow your account and your account will never grow if you get into short selling without understanding the overall structure in the market. So that is just something I'll uh, tell you out of experience. It's completely up to you whether you want to believe this or not. But in terms of uh, trying to trade for the day or let's say over the next two, three months or for the next six months, always check for the broader market trend because this has a direct impact on how your positions will perform. So the third step then is to go down to individual stocks and then select which stocks you would trade for something like swing trading or even something like positional trading. So because FMCG sector I've taken as an example, in part one yesterday, I've already told you that my preferred list is something like Tata Consumers, uh, HUL, and the third name was Imami. So these are the three names that I'm focusing upon in FMCG sector. You can just use the same principles to see which stocks qualify in pharma, something like IT, those things are. Uh, these concepts you can easily apply on those sectors also. So if you come to something like Tata Consumers here, in yesterday's video, I was telling you that this is a wonderful rounding bottom that is formed in Tata Consumers. 
we have had some sort of resistance here this is nothing but a variation of cup and handle pattern and as of now the price is still consolidating after this particular breakout candle here so these are some structures i really like to trade because this actually shows some sort of accumulation that has happened over a period of few months and then finally a breakout that has played out so nice range of candle nice bit of volume expansion to understand this red volume here that is a wide range volume you got to read some price volume books i cannot explain these things uh, in this particular video so i have suggested many books about price volume analysis go through it you'll understand what is this but in terms of uh, tata consumer structure i'll just now remove all this information so we now have a main candle here a breakout candle price is now sort of uh, fluctuating whenever shakeout patterns play out we can see some dip happening and then eventually price heading higher of course this depends upon the sector trend and the broader market trend that is why this forms a crucial data point in uh, swing trading or positional trading framework where you have to repeatedly check for sector trends and broader market trend now in terms of tata consumers if you see every time price has moved lower it is moved lower on back of very narrow range candles we'll check this on a weekly time frame chart also but whenever price is trying to move higher look at the range of these candles this clearly tells you that the momentum is clearly on the upside and that is where your bias should be in terms of trading this stock i'll just show you weekly time frame chart of the stock so if you now come down to the weekly time frame chart of tata consumers again no massive wide range candles are forming on the downside and if you just take a look at the broad term trend what is the market telling you here the one thing that market is telling you here is that you should be accumulating on every dip that plays out in the stock and as i am recording i have already seen uh, that tata consumers has now broken out of this range it is trading at 684 as of now good amount of momentum developing and this is what uh, you know in part 1 of this video we were discussing that price is just consolidating right about at the vwap level and then pretty soon you know the deviation will begin and that is what has played out so that was just from very short term trading point of view 1 2 5 days uh, those sort of structures but a larger structure in tata consumer again here as of this chart price is at 670 but now this candle has developed something like this that is 600 uh, 85 684 thereabouts and again this is some strong momentum that is developing and this is just part of the entire fmcg basket that is trying to do well because i can also see hul is now breaking out it's already broken out in the day today it's trading at 2477 now so just go back to part 1 this is a structure that we discussed so these are some very basic things that play out and it is not that uh, these things i have not shared earlier also just go through my free videos i have shared this and for those of you who are channel members go through the pullback trading part 9 series uh, this in this particular video i have mentioned and given some key rules to select some strongest stocks in the market as well as sectors so for those of you who are channel members please note that tomorrow the video will be coming out about the strongest sector stocks in the market and how in general you should be approaching trading over the next 2 months so please keep your notifications on and please be active in the community section because that is where i update daily about the market structure and about sectors and for those of you who are not channel members you can just join channel membership for one month and watch all the 51 videos in price and volume analysis series so these videos are spread out across five main playlist the first series is about price volume analysis the second series is about application of price and volume analysis third series is about detailed rule on pullback trading fourth series is about pivot range and poc analysis within this anchor vwap is also covered and the fifth series is an ongoing series on gap trading so let us also briefly discuss the structure of hul now again if you look at all these candles these are demand candles that are forming on the chart again long tail a fresh breakout has happened today i think this is a fresh 52 week high i'll have to check the chart for it but at least over the last 2 3 months this is a fresh swing high and this just tells you that there is substantial amount of demand in the stock a lot of traders will get confused here looking at this candle this is nothing but a shakeout structure that is developing and for those of you who are channel members you should now be able to identify this in real time those of you who are not channel members read the teachings of uh, tom williams and gavin homes this is when you'll be able to understand about shakeout playing out in real time i think both of these books are available for free that is on their website just google about it and please read these resources so let me now explain how i've structured my trade in terms of something like swing trading in uh, tata consumers I'll just take Tata Consumers as an example. I've used the same method for HUL and Imami. Of course, I'll be also showing you where I entered. 
uh, that is towards the end of this video. So this is where the breakout happened and at this particular point when the breakout was playing out I started accumulating Tata consumers between 646 and something like 652. So I'll share these details towards the end of the video. The way I was looking into this stock, if you look at part one, this is what the stock was doing. Some sort of uh, volatility contraction pattern. This is also cup and handle. And this was the breakout point. So this is where I started buying into the stock. And as of today's recording, the stock has already now moved up to something like 685. So when I was entering this particular stock, my initial stop loss was set at something like 615. So my risk was roughly 30 rupees per stock when I was taking entry in it. And when I had fully scaled in and the price closed at something like 672, then I moved my stop loss from 615 to something like 635. The main reason being that trade started working in my favor. We got a wide range bullish candle here. And this is where my new trailing stop loss is set. See, it makes no sense that after stock is moved, you still keep this particular stop loss level. Because if the stock were to consolidate and then break down and start moving lower, this is when you should have realized that this trade is not going to work. And this is where typically I start reducing my positions. This is what I do in terms of trading. And when the stock shows positive momentum in the direction of where you anticipate the price to move, for example, at this particular point. So 685 is where price is currently. I've just shifted my stop loss to 635. And now I will again monitor the price structure closely on a daily time frame chart. Once I'm in a stock for something like a swing trade or positional trade, I never go down to 15 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute charts. It's of no use whatsoever. Let me tell you that. You can time your entry well in terms of 60 minute. Yes, you can also use something like higher high and higher low on 60 minute to exit positions, reduce positions, but don't keep monitoring the 60 minute chart. 60 minute is still a fine uh, time frame. I teach about it a lot, but anything below 60 minute is just not required. So in case of Tata consumers, as of now, I'm not at all looking at 60 minute time frame also because I'm just looking at trailing the stop uh, with particular stop loss of 635 for the time being. If the stock crosses something like 700, I'll then move my stop loss to something like 660. This is how I keep shifting my stop loss higher till the time the trailing stop is not hit. Now, when it comes to shortlisting stocks from a sector, I look at both technical data points and fundamental data points. See, one thing I like to tell all of the beginners, fundamental analysts will tell you technicals don't work. Technical guys will tell you fundamentals don't work. In my opinion, both are actually wrong. Both technical and fundamental analysis are wonderful fields. They are fields where you have to devote a lot of time to get better. Once you do so, that is when you will realize the value of both technical and fundamentals. In general, I found that even the fundamental guys who tell technical analysis does not work. These are also the guys who look at a lot of charts. So I just don't want you to believe that both these fields don't work. Both fields work. It is just that you need to put in a lot of effort to get better. Now coming to some key data points that I track within sectors to identify stocks. I do look at the profit growth in this particular uh, example that I put up. This is again data of uh, Tata consumers. And by the way, all fundamental data points are freely available on a website called screener.in. So you don't need to pay anything. This is a wonderful website and you should be going here to check basic fundamental data points. So 19% is the profit growth of Tata consumers. I really like this figure. Let us come to something like return on equity again, 10%. This is, this is definitely acceptable, at least for a company of size of Tata consumers. And let us now come to PE ratio. See again, the obsession of investors and traders with PE ratio is something uh, that will make you miss out on some of the most momentum oriented moves in the market. Even in current market, once Nifty was at 28, 29, a lot of people who were tracking the P ratio were calling for tops in the market. I think today the P ratio is somewhere at 40 and anybody who sold their portfolio or started short selling the market just based on this ratio would have missed out on a lot of good amount of percentage gain that has come about. So just don't think that high P ratio means price cannot move higher. On the contrary, when it comes to swing trading, momentum trading, positional trading, look for stocks with high P ratio because this represents, I'll just remove these markings. A high P ratio with good amount of fundamental basic data points represents a stock that is a growth stock. This is where you should be trading. 
good companies in the market will always be expensive this is something you will have to understand and this is something you will have to live with because high pe ratio does not mean that the stock will move lower and a low pe ratio does not mean that the stock has to move higher now one of the key mistakes that one does in something like swing trading and positional trading is to chase the momentum in any given stock or sector so this is a metal sector for example and metal sector of late you've seen some really positive momentum developing and a lot of traders will be getting here at this region so this actually is not right in terms of swing trading positional trading because actually metal sector was offering entry opportunities here and when i make this statement i don't say this is any hindsight analysis because if you're a community member this is what i was teaching you in terms of price consolidation and metals being the strongest sector in the market again this information i don't give out openly in channel because this is just copied and pasted across the entire telegram community and twitter community that is why some of the information i don't give out because there are some people who just don't understand the value of content so this mistake i would tell you please avoid making don't chase momentum get into stocks and sectors that are strong that are favorable but are seeing such sort of price action activity where a pullback happens and then this is the point where you need to scale out again case in point this is where i was actually exiting my partial positions in metal sector mainly because in trading you have to sell on strength you don't have to buy into strength that is that is the whole concept that is completely uh, misunderstood by beginners that is you have to go ahead and chase these sort of momentum phases you don't have to do this if you come to my fmcg positions so this is a position of imami this i started picking up on 7th april the date is set from 11th march to 9th april take a look at something like tata consumers imami back then was available at 490 495 so i was actually buying before the move was happening take something like tata consumers again this is 8th april tata consumers back then was at 650 there about 650 655 come to something like hindustan unilever again 8th april this was available at 2400 i think today it is closed at 2480 the underlying message to you is that you have to get better at analyzing a chart when something like this is going on anybody can tell you that you need to be in metal sector now but you need to work behind getting good at your own analysis when metal sector had done something like this and was then pulling back this is nothing but a flag sort of structure that is developing on the chart and then we have seen a fresh breakout pay attention to these phases this is nothing but a pullback if you can't buy during a pullback phase and you chase momentum here there is no risk reward here and your account won't grow over a period of time so that is one thing that i want to tell you especially if you want to get better at something like swing trading positional trading this is one thing you'll have to learn that is buy at dips because when the dip is finally happening in the market this is where most of the traders just can't get in because the news flow is just not positive so this is just a psychological game that your mind plays and uh, most of the beginners don't understand this process and they go ahead and buy something like this at this specific time i'll keep repeating this uh, videos as and when i identify new sectors obviously i don't make videos that often i make only two videos per week but if you're in the community section be active there every day i update about these things uh, because it is much easier to write a post so do watch the part 1 here because this is where you will understand whatever i have explained in this particular video and please consider hitting the like button and sharing this video if you find the content useful thanks a lot for watching this video guys have a great weekend ahead take care and be safe